Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, In the beginning there was war, and after there was war, then war again and more war, since man demanded control of his own destiny. He has set out ruthlessly to destroy himself. Man, I gave you a law by which you should live with respect to your fellow man. I said to you, thou shalt not kill. For in those days you were my beloved creation. Even after the fall of Adam, which had to be, you were my beloved creation built in the image of myself and set upon the earth to glorify my name unto God, who reigns above me, above the universe, and above all things. And I commanded you respect of one another. I commanded you that your image was sacred and must not be destroyed. And I warned you of the universal law, I said, Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in my image did I create you, and you shall without choice abide by the universal law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And you shed the blood of your own kind, and your own kind shed your blood in recompense, and his own kind shed his blood, and on in accordance with a law that cannot be overruled. And you took no heed, no heed of my command, nor of my warning, and you brought about the spiral of war. Yet I was merciful. I fought your wars for you. You were trapped in a web of your own making, and I, I took pity on you. I sanctified your wars. I fought against your enemies because still I loved you. And still I hoped to save you from the web. Yet I also demanded peace. I demanded that you live in harmony together with your fellow man. I brought your enemies to you in supplication and pleaded for your mercy. And you did not listen. Finally, and all was spent, and all my words and threats and terrors and passed aside, ignored, rejected, finally, when I knew no more how to force my laws upon you, I came in love through Christ. Love thine enemy, I cried. Do good to them that hate you. If a man robs you of your coat, give him your cloak as well. If he strikes you on the cheek, Offer him the other to strike also. If he asks you to run a mile with him, run two. Make peace at all cost, because now all chance has been given you to settle the account within the boundaries of normal life. For still you have rejected my words. Still you have made war without me. Still you have killed the creation that is in your image, the image of your God. Still you have shed the blood that I told you was sacred. You have risen up against your brother in defiance of me. The sin of Cain is rife upon the earth, and the tide shows no sign of turning. So now I command you. So said my prophets, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. For this is the universal law, and God shall uphold it. But I say to you now, love thine enemy. Love thine enemy. Achieve the impossible upon earth. I, Jehovah, shall square the account in heaven. You have demanded to be judge. You have taken upon yourself the sacred robes of justice and set yourself up as a god of your fellow men. You have deified yourself among your fellows, giving yourself the right to pass judgment of life and death, taking upon yourself the burden of justice and excluding all the laws given to you by your god. 
Now is the time for your humiliation. A long time you have played the godhead. Now you must eat the dust of your iniquity. Bow before your enemy if you have a wish for salvation. You are owed nothing but pain. The pain that you have meted out. You are owed nothing but death. The death you have dealt your brother. You are owed nothing but humiliation. The humiliation you have inflicted upon your brother. You are owed neither love nor respect, neither life nor happiness. So get on your knees before your enemy and thank God for what mercy he has left for you. I have given you the sum total of my love, even to the point of death. That is your creator's love for you, and you've dragged it from him. Give now, in return, all the love that was within you. Show your love to the last farthing, if you withhold one tiny fraction of your love. Woe unto you, for you owe far more than you have to give. But if you give all, you shall be saved. Love your God and your fellow man, and nothing can harm you. You shall be beloved again. But war continued. Hatred waxed strong upon the earth. I, Jehovah, foresaw the outcome and departed, for I could scarcely bear to see its actuality. And war came again, and man set himself up as judge of his fellow man in the very names of Jehovah and Christ. In the very name of love that I promised you, you gave vent to your hatred. You put on robes of judgment, held baubles of majesty, and in the name of Christ who bade you love your enemy, you blessed the diabolical weapons of war that your obsessive hatred had spawned. You have passed on your legacy of murder. You've justified your bloodshed. You've made right the sin of death and destruction. You've handed down from generation to generation a birthright so vile and unforgivable that no power on earth can stem it now. The science of war, the justification of war, marched through the passage of time unchecked, and man falls upon his knees before them. Now I have returned. Now have I seen the dominance of war. Now have I seen the hopelessness of my creation. Now have I seen my commandments will never be. Your own distorted ideologies hold full sway in your heart, and for them you have reserved the right to kill, maim, tortured. Your head is so full of lies, created by your intellect in honor of your own superiority to God. There is no room now for effective knowledge of my laws. Therefore come I now upon the earth, Therefore am I resolved for you. Therefore pass I judgment upon my creation, such judgment that transcends all your meager and self-important efforts to play the God in my place. Therefore do I now prophesy. I no longer command. Instead, I prophesy. And my prophecy upon this wasted earth and upon this corrupt creation that squats upon its ruined surface is... Thou shalt kill. You have demanded the power of life and death. You have exercised the right of judgment upon your fellow man. You have set yourself up as lord and master of the universe. And you have perfected your machines of justice. You have developed complicated engines and devices whereby to carry out the laws you have made in defiance of your god. You've created such engines of destruction as God himself would hesitate to use in retribution against a sinful creation. You've gone to the ultimate in your search for greater and more devastating means of destruction. Then have your killing. Be driven by your weapons of war. Be ruled by your engines of devastation. They can touch nothing but you, 
and upon you they shall be turned. I, Jehovah, have now come to help you, to give you the war that you love so, to turn upon you the hatred you have so delighted in meeting out. I, Jehovah, am again beside you upon the battlefield. Already in two wars I have proved that I can create more devastation amongst you than you can amongst yourself. Already I made war so vile and horrible, even in your eyes, that a few of you have begun to wonder about the wisdom of it. Already I have helped you decimate yourselves beyond the most terrifying nightmares of destruction. Already you have seen, though not recognized, the hand of Jehovah upon your engines of war, the power of Jehovah in the personalities of your leaders, and there shall be more, much more. You have decided upon war. You have chosen this road of butchery and slaughter. You have set out determinedly upon the way of devastation, and to this you shall come. You have made your choice. Jehovah your God shall implement it for you, for Jehovah gives man what man demands of him, and man for centuries has cried out for blood and more blood, and Jehovah has satisfied not the demand. But now, in the last days, shall man's cry be heard, and I, Jehovah, shall bestow upon my creation that which it craves. And in the ending of the world shall all the dams be broken, and the flood shall rise upon the land, and the deluge of man's hatred shall be unleashed and sweep across the face of the earth, and man shall know the destiny that he has desired. He shall know the outcome of his cry for blood. He shall have his desire in abundance. I, Jehovah, shall bestow it upon him. And in the last days, according to the prophecies of ancient times, my army shall come upon the field. The army of the Lord shall take its stand upon the field of battle, and I shall lead my army into battle, and each man shall tremble at the sight of it, and the earth shall quake at the presence of it, and it shall come to pass that all shall know that Jehovah is upon the earth, and that his army has assembled. And my army shall be like no other in the history of mankind, for men shall be paralyzed at the very sight of it, and they shall fall down in a dead faint, and nothing shall destroy it, because my hand that shall defend it and make it invulnerable. And no man shall look upon my army to withstand it, and shall live. No man shall stand before my army to halt it, and shall live. For he who puts forth the hand to stay the army of Jehovah shall surely die in the moment of his audacity. For the army of God comes to purify the earth, and the cities that are eek of death and destroy, all that approaches them with the pollution of the air, shall be no obstacle to Jehovah's army, for it shall have no effect of such pollution, for it shall be purified and guarded from such pollution. But men shall die of it. They that are not burned in the fire of destruction, they shall decay in the atmosphere of their own corruption, which they have brought upon themselves. And they who cry at the last, we never wished it so. They shall be the first to die, for they are the hypocrites and deceivers. They are the fine-worded ones. They are the pretense, the bringers of war disguises, messengers of peace. Theirs is the lie. Theirs is the fiction. Theirs the unpardonable lie. For they have said mankind desires peace, and the lie be upon them and their like. And those who say, it is as we wished it, they speak the truth. For man receives at the hands of his God that which he demands. He demanded the throne of judgment, and his God gave it to him. From the seat of judgment he cried for the blood of man, and now is his wish to be granted. And the river shall cease to flow but the blood that man had cried out to receive, and the land shall grow nothing but the bodies of the slain that men had been asked to be given, 
and the air shall contain nothing but the corrupting death that man had sought to inherit. And the sea shall not be unfruitful of death, for the fish shall die and the creatures that even crawl upon the seabed, for the water shall be polluted as the air, and death shall swim deep into the ocean and touch the uttermost depths. So there shall be no escape. And when the earth has been saturated with the pollution of the death that man had been granted according to his desire, then shall the surface of the earth be split from end to end, and the fire from within shall rise out and spread over the whole earth to purify it. And the army of the Lord shall go before the fire, and the fire shall meet, and the whole earth shall be covered, and the whole earth shall be purified by the fire. And the armor shall lead the fire into every corner of the globe, and there shall be no pollution left in the world. And the fire shall reach even to the uttermost depths of the sea, and the sea shall be dried up, and the pollution destroyed, and the army of the Lord shall depart. And the energy that was the world, and the energy that was humanity, shall be released and shall return to me, and my life shall return to me through mankind's devastation. For you know in the moment of your death that I am your God, and you are my creation, and I am the Lord Jehovah. War is a central pivot of man's rejection of me, for war is the ultimate presumption. War is a great destroyer, and only God has a right to destroy. War is a sentence of death passed upon the guilty, and only God may pass the sentence of death. War is a wielder of power over men, and only God may wield power in such a fashion. War is the outcome of hate that is channeled into mass expression, and this is a denial of the authority of God. Man had the right to express his hatred. Man had the right to express his wrath. He had the right to roar like a lion against a man who wronged him and to man recompense within the law I gave him. Man had the right of justice amongst his fellow men, justice at the hand of his creator, justice by the law of his creator. But now man has forfeited all his rights. He has not demanded recompense within the law. He has not required justice by the hand of his creator, nor by the law of his creator. He has created his own law, his own justice. He has fabricated laws whereby he can demand more than recompense, whereby he can express his demands through army and through weapons of war, whereby he can put no limit on his retribution against his enemy. He has flouted my law which I gave him and replaced it with another more to his advantage. And this new law he is justified by the use of his distorting intellect. He has made it a good law to deceive himself. He has called it the law of God, though it was never such, to deceive himself. And he has twisted it to suit his purposes. And he has ridden the earth upon its back and denied the earth in its name. And he has justified his dealings with his fellow men by the dingy light of the law he has created for himself. And now comes the hour of purging. Now comes the time to sweep away all man's self-affected majesty, to wash the world of his hypocrisy. Now is the time to show him that he is no more master of his destiny. They is long since played into the hands of the anti-God whom he had served now for many centuries in the grayness of his virtuosity. Now is the time for man to see the truth of his self-deception in the stark brilliance of Jehovah's presence, to see his dead march into the pit of hell, to see the spectacle of himself clothed in robes of royalty, decked with medals for virtue and bravery awarded by himself and brandishing a sheaf of scrolls, one stating his rights drawn up by himself 
another setting out his qualifications established by himself, another laying down the law for his fellow man passed by himself, another giving him a passport to eternal life granted by himself, and another that he could not read inscribed in letters of human blood and saying, God is dead. Long live humanity. For black and white have merged into a murky gray, and there is no light in the world, for all is one, and nothing is marked with truth. For good is evil, and evil good, and heaven is to be found in hell. Nobody knows any more which is right, and which is the left-hand path, because all are one, and the devil has claimed the whole territory of earth, and none was there to say him nay. No plot was marked out in stark black and white to reserve it from the hand of Satan and preserve it as the seat of Jehovah. All is merged together. No purity remains. Nothing is left of the mark of Jehovah, only a disfigured face crushed beneath the feet of armies marching in every direction so that none can recognize its features. But now... Though I am dead within the earth, yet do I live without, and am come from without. But this time I give nothing to be crushed underfoot, nothing to be squandered, destroyed, abused, ridiculed. I come instead to give one thing that shall be welcomed, for it is always sought. I bring you war. War as you have never known it. Killing as you have never seen it. Destruction as you have never felt felt it. Devastation as you have never imagined it. It is your promised destiny. Wars to end all wars. Wars that shall need the land for wars to be fought upon. That shall leave no hand to fight, nor heart to yearn for struggle. Wars that shall cause the earth itself to rise and smite the insects that disturb its peaceful orbit and nothing can now turn the tide. Presume not to reverse the pattern you have demanded and been granted. It is inevitable, and Jehovah's mighty hand shall be behind the great tremblings of the latter days. For my wrath is beyond the fury of the volcano, my anger above the shrieking of the hurricane, my devastation far outside the limits of the earthquake. All mankind at once shall know the terror of my coming, and the earth shall be filled with my glory. The eyes of the blind shall be open, the tongues of those who are dumb shall be loosed, the hearts of those who feel nothing shall melt, the hearts of those who love shall be turned to stone, the weak shall be strong, and the strong shall wither away. The rational man shall babble lunacy, and the virtuous man shall steep himself in vice. The sick shall rise from their beds, and corpses from the tombs. The kings and governors shall kneel before the hungry and the homeless. The whole earth shall be turned upside down, and the sea shall cover the land. For my work shall run loose upon the world, and the world shall cower at my presence. And be not deluded, there shall be no reprieve. For I, Jehovah, am resolved. My word is law amongst the stars and upon the earth. For I, and the God of the universe, and the earth is my footstool.